there it is right here. This is the piece that we're gonna use. Roll out flooring that we're gonna put on the trailer. Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck 2.0 with me, Frank Baltiers, where we take a empty trailer and we convert it into a mobile kitchen on wheels called a concession trailer, a vending trailer, or you can call it a food truck as well. So in the, today's video, we're gonna be doing a recap on the things we have ordered, some of the little upgrades that we're doing on this food truck right here. And some of the some of the videos coming up, which uh, will be the electrical, which uh, I've had a lot of feedback that you guys really want to see that in depth. So we're going to cover that every single detail. Hopefully I don't miss something. And if I do, make sure you drop it in the comments and also the flooring, the ceilings, all that fun stuff. But we're going to be taking it step by step. Everything I do, I put it on a video. This is a strong Stromberg generator trailer tray that I just built on here it's pretty uh, self pretty easy to, to put together uh, I put a little bit of a hyperlapse in here for you uh, you just put the legs you put the bottom you put the tray and you're ready to rock and roll you can put your generator right on top which is what I put is my Westinghouse inverter generator which puts out about 30 amps that's all I need to be able to run my food truck is about 30 amps and down here we're gonna be using it to put our two 30 pound propane tanks that's kind of the recap on here. This is the beast that carries the generator around that powers everything up. So let's walk to the back and I'm gonna show you the flooring that uh, I ordered and also a couple of the upgrades that we did on the electrical. So let me tell you some of the upgrades that we're doing to the electrical before I tell you how I messed up on, <laughs> on something that I did. Uh, what I did differently on this one, as you can see here, this right here was our previous mock-up. I knocked it down to the floor because we're not gonna use it anymore because we got the trailer now in, uh, in what we're doing here. So this, this right here is an eight gauge um, SO cable service entrance cable this handles about 40 if you really push it you can handle up to 50 amps on here but uh, what I did now is I bought this this one right here it's a 6.3 cable this can handle man just about anything you push to it I would say about 50 60 amps is what this one can handle it's a 6 gauge service entrance cable SO cable I'll link it here in the description and uh, the only difference is it handles more amps. On my food truck, I have a 10 gauge wire, so it only handles about 30. This is plenty for what I need, but as you get heavy, as you get bigger in gauge, it gets heavier and a little bit thicker. But that's one of the upgrades that we're doing differently. You want to get, the, as you call it, the most bang for your buck. Because once you run this, it's not very typical that you'll run it again unless it goes bad or something like that. This is going to be the generator plug that we use. is a 50 amp generator plug so i'm going to take it out of here and put it in the front of the food truck i'm going to show you how i'm going to do that but i just wanted to show you really quick one of the upgrades that we're doing is we're doing a six gauge so cable so make sure that uh, if you're handling a lot of amps or watts in your truck or in your trailer you get the biggest wire that you can and it's just going to be a little bit thicker so you have to uh, account for that but i'm going to show you how to do it on this video here also, another thing that uh, I have sitting in my yard that is worth a heck of a lot of money, I guess, I bought it a long time ago, is this right here. I took out all my stainless steel sheets. I got them really, really cheap. Uh, a lot of it is because they're damaged in like the corners right here. As you can see, they have a lot of damage in the edges, which is fine because I can just cut that off. And then I ordered my stainless steel transition pieces which I received last week. Um, 
but I took these out because it makes it so much easier to cut outside. I bought these two saw horses. I ordered them on Amazon. I'll link those as well. It makes it so much easier to handle your stainless steel when you're out here. So that's what I have there. Make sure you tarp it off if you leave it outside. That way it doesn't get all wet. Let me show you the other side. Just so you see here, look at the damage that it has in the corners. I just asked the, the, the metal guys. I bought it here locally in Lombard. Illinois I asked them do you guys have any damaged stainless steel pieces and this is what they gave me at about first it was 40 a, 40 a sheet and then it ended up being about 90 a sheet it ended up being about 90 like I said $90 a sheet which is uh, 10 sheets is what I have sitting right there it's on the other side I'm looking at my sheets right there so about 900 bucks for obviously plus tax and whatever so about a thousand dollars in stainless steel is what we're gonna do here we're gonna put all the stainless steel right on top with uh they call them slim led can lights i'll link those as well uh, all this is going to be wrapped in uh, stainless steel so one thing that i messed up on is uh, as as we're trying to build it ourselves we're always looking for ways actually i am looking for ways on how to uh get the most the, the most product for the least amount of money and still not skimp on the quality so what I try to do is I went to a local hardware store here called Menards. It's in the Midwest. Uh, it's kind of like a Home Depot, but more, more uh, regional. And I bought the coin gray flooring that they had. However, I messed up as uh, I should have taken like my little sample that I have here and compared it to the one that I bought because I did buy it. I brought it all the way and it was sitting right here. And actually I have to return that because that's the glue that goes underneath it from the same store um, and I and I didn't look at the thickness I did look at it online but I was like yeah it can't really matter it's just like point like six point zero six of millimeters or whatever in in uh, thickness difference I was like it can't be that bad but that actually was this is the one that I used. this is the husky coin gray flooring from Home Depot this I ordered two days ago and I'm gonna get it uh, next Wednesday which is June 30th I'm gonna get it next Wednesday and this right here is worth it's uh, it's worth the extra little bit of money because it's double the thickness it's not double the price but it is double the thickness $200 a roll is what I paid for it 7.5 feet seven and a half feet by 17 feet is what the length of it is and because of your feedback on the last videos I am gonna follow them because you guys were really cool on the tips so I'm gonna lay my flooring first. So you're gonna see that here next week when I get that flooring. I'm gonna get it Wednesday, so maybe Thursday or Friday of July 1st, July 2nd, 2021. We're gonna be laying the floor down. I'm gonna put that first because I'm gonna wrap, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna cut it. I'm gonna like loop it up against the wall over there and over here. And then I'm gonna put the walls whoop, right on top. That way I don't have to trim the floor that's actually a great idea and you guys gave me that feedback so i appreciate that very much the other option that you can use for your flooring is this right here hey you can see me holding my camera this is the other option that you can use on the flooring is the diamond plate which is what i have on my trailer you can see it right there it's aluminum diamond plate and you can use that on uh it's right there like that you can use that on your floor as well what i don't like about the diamond plate is that when you put two pieces together you're gonna have like a like a little transition piece, which sometimes can lead to uh, like if you're mopping your floors, you'll get water in there. So that's why I don't like the the diamond plate. However, it's not a bad decision to make. It's just I wish I wouldn't have used it on my food truck, but it's too late to change it because it's a lot of work. So make sure that you plan properly. If you like this rubber flooring, it's all one piece and it's actually pretty durable. Then make sure you buy this roll and it'll last you a while so far i haven't had any issues on the last trailer that i built they haven't told me that it's worn off or it's bad or anything like that so i'm going to keep using this one home depot husky coin gray flooring what else are we doing here oh and let me let me run you uh through a quick to end this video let me run you through a quick electrical what we're going to do and how we're going to do it that way uh we're on the same page and when i start doing it you guys can follow along and put the electrical in your food truck as well so right here, we're gonna drill a hole through this plywood on the inside, and we're gonna drill down to the bottom of the trailer because we're gonna put the electrical panel back here. 
the generator plug is gonna be in the front of the food trailer over there next to that generator rack because then you can run like a like a little loop of power, a power cord to your generator and then keep it nice and short. So we're gonna be running all underneath the trailer. I'm gonna show you how you do that step by step all underneath the trailer as much as I can because it's gonna be hard to be doing work down there and have the camera down there. These are gonna come off these hooks off this trailer i think they used it to uh, to carry a carry a golf cart in here so we're going to take those off but the electric the electrical panel is going to go right here let me show you underneath the trailer kind of how it looks this right here this unit bit is what we use to uh, cut our hole in the front of the trailer for the generator plug i'll show you how we use that step bit or unit bit as they call it oh but down here it's gonna be fun this is how we're gonna run the cable right down here is along. Let me see if I can lighten it up for you a little bit. Okay, so you guys see that hole right there on um, the, su the support, I guess, if you want to call it, of the truck, of the trailer. And we're going to be running it right through there. So we're going to widen this part right here. We're going to widen this out, widen that out, and all the way down the trailer to the other side. We're just going to keep going and going and going. And that's how we're going to run this power cable all the way to the front of the trailer just so you guys can get that idea now I move sides to the other side of the trailer the front part maybe we can get a little bit better light right there so you guys can see that there is that piece right there you guys can see it perfectly right there this is underneath the trailer just so you guys know underneath the trailer all these little gaps we're gonna widen this out right there goodness stay bright we're going to widen this just a little bit so that service entrance cable can fit in there and it's not going to squeeze right there and then we're going to just keep running it this way all the way to the front of the trailer which is right there if you guys can see it and then that's where we're going to put our generator plug so with that I am underneath the trailer and that's how we're going to end the video. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Uh, any questions that you have, please drop them in the comments. Ow! It's too uncomfortable talking on here. Drop them in the comments and we'll get to them as, as, as uh, we can. I'd answer every one of your comments personally. So thank you for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, we're going to be taking this full uh, trailer up to a concession trailer, a concession kitchen. And then we're going to be showing you how to do it step by step. So once again, thank you. Frank Baltiers with How to Build Your Food Truck 2.0.